the Fort Hill Performing Arts Center is a new theater in an historic building in Canandaigua, New York. With me to talk about their upcoming season is Sue Ann Townsend, the executive director. Welcome, Sue Ann. Thanks for coming in. Thank you, Eric. Yeah. So good to see you again. <laughs> Always nice to be with you. Well, it's great that we had a little time to think ahead and plan during the uh, recent uh, season when nothing much was happening in the theaters. The theaters are pretty dark. Yes, it gave us plenty of time to hope and dream and plan for the future. <laughs> well, you ha certainly have some exciting offerings coming up, and uh, you know, especially for fans of tribute bands. If you like a tribute band, boy, you have a good season coming up there. Yes, um, I was kind of alerted to the fact that many of our patrons are highly interested in tribute acts and it being our really first full season um, period, trying to um, provide as much interest um, uh, at the immediate for our patrons. So we've been lucky to start, kick off the 2022 season with some really robust uh, tribute acts. Uh, we have uh, a tribute to um, Elton John, uh, to Billy Joel, to Fleetwood Mac, all on the off, and uh, probably some more coming up. Oh, that's phenomenal. I'm sure those are enjoyable uh, experiences for everyone. Yes, but I don't want us to become known as, you know, the place the tribute bands play and nothing else. So uh, yeah. we're really excited to also have Rochester City Ballet in the venue, as well as the Ewing Forum, bringing their um, variety of speakers. So tell us about the City Ballet. That requires a specialized floor, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And we're very lucky to have a proper floor in-house. In fact, um, we're very well equipped for the ballet. Not only do we have the proper Marley floor, we also have bars in-house and Zed racks for costumes and uh, warm-up space that has a proper floor for them. And so basically all they have to do is bring their dancers, their costumes and their music and they're ready to go. Oh, that's fantastic. Now, is this classical ballet? What kind of works are they performing? Uh, Rochester City Ballet does a variety of works. We had them in in October um, for a show called Terrifically Theatrical. They um, did uh, the George Balanchine classic, um, Who Cares, which is set to a suite of Gershwin music uh, orchestrated by Hershey Kay, and, as well as some contemporary works by Salvatore Aiello and a new work by Jamie Leverett. Uh, in, in next week, um, this being the beginning of December, next week we will um, see them in the Nutcracker, which is of course a holiday classic. But in 22, they'll be bringing us Carmen and Firebird. It's uh, such exciting music, the Firebird, that beautiful dramatic uh, Russian music uh, to dance to, that's classical ballet. It's, but it's not just classical dance there. You have other kinds of dance in your season, I think. No, we do, and we are uh, planning to expand to bring in more contemporary dance, and I am also working to uh, orchestrate an international music and dance festival. This was something that I was hoping to highlight for our first season, which was uh, uh, obviated by uh, the COVID closure <laughs> and still international travel is problematic. Uh -huh. So we pushed that on down the road, um, but I am definitely looking to bring in a wide variety of dance offerings and uh, also uh, helping to help people travel the world without going too far. <laughs> <laughs> well now, uh, the, uh, what time of year would that uh, International Dance and Music Festival happen? We hope to do it so it bridges the, uh, probably uh, half of it will happen in September, October, and then the other half will happen in kind of March, April sort of thing. It'll, it'll breach the seasons. Right, so. um, but we're, it, it all depends, it all hinges on, on COVID and international travel yeah. when that will actually happen. Yeah. <laughs> 
it's an exciting time to be planning things. So uh, in addition to, we have the tribute bands, and we have the classical dance, and we have uh, more popular dance like stomp and things like that coming up, mm -hmm. I believe. Yes, and we also have, we were very lucky to be able to participate in the first national tour of an incredibly fun and thought-provoking show called Making Cake. Right. Dasha Kelly Hamilton um, is a poet and uh, an actress, and um, she calls herself a change maker. And she has done this absolutely incredible, what I refer to as one plus woman show, um, where uh, she relies on vignettes and multimedia presentations and her own dynamic um, self. Um, to do a uh, dramatic slash comedic look at race, class, and gender issues in the United States through all channeled through the metaphor of cake. And um, she's assisted by two bakers. And it, in the second act, everybody gets to eat cake. <laughs> well, <laughs> and this is the first national tour of this show. And we're incredibly lucky being a new venue to be invited to participate in this tour. So she will be with us the 28th of January um, in 22. So I see. And you mentioned that's comedic. If you're a fan of uh, comedy evenings, do you have anything like that on your schedule? Yes, we, ha we are um, working on a series called Comedy at the Pack, where we will periodically feature stand-up comedy nights. And uh, right now I am working with the booking agent. We know when the nights are, but we don't know the artist lineup yet. Mm. And I, and as with most things, we'll be starting slow and then um, hoping to expand in the future. I'm trying also to plan a jazz blues series oh. that will be uh, inclusive of local artists, regional artists, as well as national touring artists. So, um, you know, the, it, it's slow growth. <laughs> ah, that's wonderful. As an executive director, you look out in advance and plan your seasons and plan for a well-rounded profile of offerings. Yes, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Um, we also were incredibly lucky to receive as a gift um, a nine foot Steinway concert brand. Oh. So I also have a classical series that I am uh, uh, planning. And one of my goals is to see that uh, beautiful nine foot Steinway put through its paces on some big messy Rachmaninoff or something like that. <laughs> so, uh, so, so that's in the process too. Oh. We recently had Rose Kieran um, who is a beautiful opera singer um, who was actually part of our grand opening gala and has since moved out of the region, but happened to be back visiting. And so we presented her in recital um, last month, which was quite lovely to, to get her back because she was one of the one of the stars of, of our, our grand opening gala in January of 20. So classical vocal recitals and piano concertos and that sort of thing might find their home at Fort Hill. I want to do everything. Oh, <laughs> that's so exciting. Well, now you mentioned local artists and regional artists. Uh, who could we look for there, like the Cool Club and, the, and that sort of thing? <laughs> Yes, um, uh, we our big opener in March of 20 was a local uh, group called the Undercover Project, which was all local professional musicians coming together to play together. And um, so we want to be a home for local musicians. We'll be featuring in 22, the Cool Club and the Lipker Sisters, Diana Jacobs Band. Diana Jacobs Band was also another participant in our grand opening gala, and she's near and dear to our hearts. And we'll have a new album to release soon um, after, our, after her appearance with us. Um, and we also have another local band called Junkyard Field Trip. <laughs> and we, um, we're always on the look for, for um, reg local bands of, of high quality of diverse genres. Um, 
So we want to be a home to local musicians and a place where they can grow their audience base. You know, we also um, have a, a, a jazz, have been having jazz Sundays with uh, Craig Schneider and Collective Force, kind of a come and go Sunday afternoon jazz cafe sort of thing. Nice. So uh, that will have a reappearance in 22 also, I'm sure. Now, I thought I saw Bill Tiberio on your website there. Bill Tiberio is, this was just confirmed the other day. Bill is bringing um, kind of an all-star jazz band and he's making plans also to have a band, jazz band of students um, playing uh, also on the same program, so it can kind of show um, the 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 generation of musicians to come in the future. Oh. So we're very excited for that event. We hope that uh, that will in fact become an annual event um, that that we can like honor successful musicians that have come out of you know, this region in general and gone on to bigger and better things. And uh, is that a benefit for your... Uh... It, it, it will be. He's offered to do it as a benefit for oh Fort Hill. And we're greatly appreciative about that. But we're just actually really happy to have the opportunity to work with him. <laughs> sure. And, uh, you know, as an executive director, you watch the, uh, the dollars side of things, too. How is Canadagua as a, a supportive community? Canadagua has been incredibly supportive of us, especially through this long COVID closure. Mm. Um, we were very um, careful with how we managed our money. And I, it, you found me often with the heat turned down to the bare minimum, no lights on, working in three sweaters. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. you know, in order to try to conserve every penny. Sure. But, um, you know, our, our donor base in not only the immediate area, but people who, have, are, who live far away but have a strong connection to the area also have made it possible for us to not only get realize the renovation project but to maintain ourselves so we could reopen for activity i see and so if people want to find you and support you what is your website our website is www.fhpac.org and um, there you will find um, all the upcoming events as we secure them and can release them for sale. Um, you will also find, if you dig a little deeper in the website, some history about the venue, some crazy photos of the renovation and reconstruction project, and uh, lots of information about us. And you can also get on our mailing list and um, uh, let us know if you want to volunteer. So um, please visit visit fhpac.org. That's great. Thank you so much for telling us about it. Just say the website just one more time for us. Okay, visit us please at fhpac.org. Well, it's been delightful to speak with you today and congratulations on surviving through the calm period and planning such an exciting season ahead. We're talking about the Fort Hill Performing Arts Center in Canandaigua, New York. My guest has been Sue Ann Townsend, their executive director in the Spotlight today. Join us next time. In the Spotlight is a production of Penfield Television with sponsorship from No Clinton Associates, a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Advisors. If you enjoy this program, please find us on Facebook, like and share the program, and find our full playlist on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching.